picking your first camera. There's so many things to consider whenever you're buying your first camera or even considering buying your first camera. And today we're gonna to take a look at a few of the things that I think are very important when you're picking your first camera. So my name is Owen and I'm a photographer and a general outdoors enthusiast based on the island of Ireland. And that usually means, you know, one thing. I like taking landscape photos, but I like taking all sorts of photos. Unless you're into technology, looking up anything to do with anything about technology on the internet can be a fair pain in the arse. I know it's a pain in the arse, you know it's a pain in the arse, and you're gonna get one guy telling you to get X, while the other guy's telling you to go get Y, but in reality, Z is the thing that you need. So today, I'm gonna break it down, make it a little bit simpler in the context of buying your first camera. So we could go down the smartphone route, but I'm not gonna talk about that right away. It's not something that I find is a, uh, I mean, if you're clicking on this video, I would assume that you're already past using a smartphone at, at the moment. That's kind of where I would be at. But looking at cameras online, you're gonna have numbers and spec lists and spec sheets being thrust upon you faster than anything. That's all people wanna talk about is, you know, what's the fastest shutter speed the camera can do? How many megapixels can it do? What's the ISO range? Those are all things that will be fired upon. But there's two basic things to start off with that you really need to ask yourself before you pick up a camera, or before you even start looking for a camera. Number one is what you're gonna use the camera for. That's primarily what I would first off think, what are you gonna use it for? Do you wanna take it out on the ocean? Uh, are you going hiking with it? Doesn't need to be small and light for, for those sorts of things. Or is it a, a family camera for taking family portraits or pictures? Or are you a professional and you are on this video just because you're browsing the internet at 3 a.m.? Um, but those things are important when it comes to deciding on what type of camera you are. It'll push you either down an action camera or getting a DSLR or going down the mirrorless route or just getting a compact camera. There's, there's loads of different options for everyone. And the second question, which I think is very, very underestimated uh, in all of these cameras, because I feel like everybody on YouTube just tells you, oh, everybody's got an unlimited budget. So for me, the second question that's most important is how much do you want to spend? So not everyone agrees on the whole budget thing, but I kind of put it down to this. I mean, there's no point in going to spend 500 euro on a GoPro action camera to take pictures of your nan's birthday, which is probably going to be horribly lit and, you know, not a great place to use an action camera when you could spend maybe half that amount on a, on a secondhand DSLR and get way, way better results. So the thing when it comes to budget is the reality with cameras, like most things in life, you can spend as much as you want. So once you've decided on your budget and your use case, done, done, um, you can start looking at cameras. So for me, the cameras fall into five categories. You've got one, you've got your compact cameras, two, you've got your, uh, your bridge cameras, three, your action cams, as well as four, your DSLRs, and five, your mirrorless cameras. So mirrorless cameras are coming in basically replacing DSLRs now, um, but there's a great used market for DSLRs and there's still some quite capable new DSLRs out as well at the moment. Generally, your bridge cameras, your compact cameras, and your action cameras are cameras that are right out of the box, ready to shoot. You'll take it out of the box, hit the shutter button, and it'll take your photos. It'll do them in auto, some of them have manual settings. Generally, they're quite limited in what they can do, but they'll be ready to go. With DSLR and mirrorless cameras, they tend to come in two options. You'll get them body only without any lenses, or you can get them with a starter kit lens, which is usually like an 18 to 55 on a crop sensor and a 28 to 70-ish on, on the full frame side of things. Great to get you started. Going down the lens rabbit hole is a whole other video in itself, but in general, you get one with a 28 to 70 and you're ready to go. You're ready to start shooting. The, the main thing that is a great benefit with those though, is you have the flexibility to upgrade as you continue on. So, so with the first three groups, the names of the cameras kind of describe exactly the use cases that they're for. Uh, compact cameras are very small, pocketable. You can just put them in a jeans pocket or they can sit in the bottom of a bag and you know they're they're really easy to carry around with you 
Uh, and with that, you know, the prime example I would look with that if you're looking to look something up is like the Canon G5X would be a quite a good compact camera in that sense. With the bridge, the description isn't as obvious, but the way I always look at these bridge cameras, they've usually got huge zoom ranges on them and they bridge the gap from you to the distance. That's how I kind of remember it. So you'll see the likes of the, I think it's the Canon, oh sorry, not the Canon, the Nikon P1000. It's that big ass zoom lens. I think it's got like a 3000 millimeter equivalent zoom. Um, those are what bridge cameras are. So they'll go from like really wide angle to absolutely like looking at the moon. So really good at zoom. And with action cameras, it's just that. They're designed for action. They're usually small, compact. A lot of them are waterproof or they'll come with a waterproof housing. They've got wide angle lenses and are in general more video focused, but a lot of them can take awesome images. Uh, so they're great for just strapping on to your chest or you can put them on your head. When it comes to Form 5, it is DSLR or mirrorless. Mirrorless cameras don't have what you have as like a prism or a, or a mirror in front of your sensor. So when you look through a DSLR, you're looking at a reflection of what the lens sees. So it's a, there's a little mirror in front of the lens that reflects it up through to the eyepiece. On a mirrorless camera, there's an another screen which is just reading directly from the sensor. So you're seeing exactly what the sensor sees. Advantages are on mirrorless cameras, you're seeing the image that you get. When you adjust the exposure or you amend your aperture or adjust your ISO, what you see on the screen is usually the image that you're going to get. What that means is because there isn't a big mirrored piece or any moving parts to move that mirror out of the way, mirrorless cameras can tend to be smaller. So you'll have the likes of your A7, A6000 series on Sony. They're tiny little cameras. Sarah's got a great one and, and they're fantastic. They're very small, compact as well. If you get a small lens for them, brilliant. But again, adaptable. You can put a zoom lens on it and zoom to 3000 millimeters if you, if you can find a lens that will do that. This brings me on to another point. How much gear are you willing to carry around? You know, bigger is better, right? You know, the more you're carrying, the better it is. The reality of it is, is having a big camera can discourage you from taking photos. I've seen it with people where they have the gear, but they just don't want to carry it with them. They don't want to take it somewhere. Uh, there's the whole idea of taking out a big ass camera in public somewhere and people get very self-conscious of having this equipment and trying to get good pictures. And it just puts them off the whole idea to begin with. Whereas in that case, maybe to get yourself more comfortable, a smaller, more compact camera that's a little bit more discreet um, might be more suitable. That is something that you do need to consider whenever you are buying. You know, are you shy and, you know, want to hide in and blend in? And lastly then, as well as that, what you do want to take into consideration is how detailed do you want to be with your photography? Do you want the camera to do everything and you just not worry about it, all you have to do is hit the shutter button? Or do you want those manual settings which will enable you to have full creative control over the images that you're taking? Uh, your aperture priority, shutter priority, um, a bulb mode, uh, being able to decide in full manual settings, you know, how shallow do you want your depth of field? Those are things that, you know, tend to be on the more high end compact cameras, but are on all DSLRs and Lara mirrorless cameras. So that's one thing I would look at in, uh, in compact cameras, especially if you want more control, do make sure you're spending a little bit more money because a lot of those cameras don't have all that functionality. Video functionality is becoming increasingly popular on cameras these days um, with the growth of hybrid shooting. Most cameras will come with 4K, but there is, which would be a whole other topic in itself, um, there is the element of good 4K and bad 4K. There's a lot more to it than resolution and numbers. Um, and because of that, there are cameras that are better at video and there are cameras that are better at photo taking. So Sony are the prime example. They do everything in threes. So you'll get your Sony a7 III, which is kind of the jack of all trades. You'll get your Sony a7 R3, which is more photography centric. And then you'll get your Sony a7S 3 which is more video centric. That's just in the mirrorless camera range, but there's, there's a whole slew of options that you need to consider. Speaking about 4K video and saying about numbers, numbers aren't everything. Most reputable brands these days can take decent photos and megapixels aren't 
the be all and end all. Much like 4K isn't created equal among all cameras, you can say the exact same thing for megapixels. So megapixel counts are the number that all photo advertising just shouts at because it's a big ass number. It's not the most important thing. Um, I mean, you're seeing Samsung release their phones with 100 megapixel sensors and you're sitting going now, well, there's a reason that these sorts of cameras aren't going that way. You know, it's definitely because it's not the be all and end all. Um, good megapixels are better than more megapixels. 24 is more than enough. That's the way I kind of stick with it. So, and this brings me to phones. Um, I didn't want to include them in the five camera things because it's, this is a camera video. But I'd argue that like for 90% of people, their phone is going to be fine. It'll do a decent job on your bloody holiday snaps and family photos. Uh, you know, just day to day carrying. It's something that you can just throw in your pocket. And AI on these phones means that these days that the photos come out looking great. They look amazing. They'll, they will do it. And then, and, and most phones, you can look up some professional apps, which will give you a little bit of creative control over how you're shooting on those phones as well. So it is definitely something to consider is like, do I really need to spend money on a camera when this is what I'm going to do with it? You're here looking for information on cameras. And I would always assume that if you're that curious, you're beyond a phone. You've probably decided, you know what, my phone is there. I'm happy with it being my phone, but I would prefer to have a dedicated camera. In conclusion to my as jargon free guide to picking your first camera as I possibly could, if I didn't keep it jargon free, comment below and let me know what you need me to explain and I will happily do it in the comments for you. Uh, but basically in conclusion, I've got four ideas that you should consider when you're picking up your first camera. So first two are the main ones that I would really decide is, is your, what you're gonna use the camera for and your budget. Then the weight of the camera, because again, you go down the DSLR route, you're gonna have to buy lenses and then you're gonna need a camera bag that's dedicated to that. And that leads to gas. And if you don't know what gas is, it just goes down that, you just go down that route. We've been there. If, if, and then lastly is the, the feature set that you want on a camera. So do you want to primarily do video? Do you want to do the ins and outs of photography? Do you want to get to know how to take a photo and the manual control over that? Or do you just want a camera that will just take a bloody picture? I nearly wish that I only wanted a camera that would just take a bloody picture, but we're past that now at this stage. Beyond that, leave a comment below anyway and tell me what your first camera is or the first camera that you're looking at to pick up. I'd love to know one. I'd love to maybe get into the little deep dive on the techie side of things. If you did enjoy this, please subscribe. Give me a little thumbs up. The encouragement is always good when you, you know you're making videos that people are interested in watching. And again, thanks for it and have a good day wherever you are.